Hey guys, and welcome back. This week we are at Stockton, Missouri. Stockton is a little bit smaller town to get away from that big city life, and they've got one heck of a crappie lake out here from what I'm hearing. They've got a lot of great shopping opportunities and a lot of cool stuff to see here. And if you bring your family and your RV or your camper, stop up there at Kimmy's at Catlingers. You gotta check out that iron bridge and that little swimming area they got there for the kids. That is really awesome stuff. But one thing that I have forgot, I don't have my fishing license yet, and I've gotta get stocked up on bait, so I'm gonna stop in at the stables and check them out. Well, we got that all taken care of, guys. Let's head on over to Orleans Trail Marina. That's where we're staying, that's where we're launching at. We're meeting up with Amos Livingston there, and we might even grab a bite to eat while we're there, but first things first, let's go get on the water. I spent most of my life chasing. Chasing success, chasing money, chasing respect. Truth is, nothing has brought me joy like being right here on the water. Rod in hand, hook on the line, chasing crappie. I am a crappie angler. These are our stories, and this is On the Hook. I'm Amos Livingston, and I am a crappie fisherman. Crappie fishing has been a passion of mine all my life, really. I mean, I started fishing with my mom and with my dad when I was a little boy and just grew up fishing, and uh, it's just been a dream of mine to fish for my life. I guide here on Stockton, and I'm, I'm out here all the time, you know, chasing fish around on this lake. And, uh, it's, it's a pretty good lake. You ain't going to catch big fish, but you're going to catch good numbers. Well, I've been on Jeremy's Pro Staff now for four years uh, with Crappie Monster. Um, I met him, that's how I met him, through Crappie Monster and do a lot of shows working for him. Uh, haven't ever been in, this will be the first time I've ever been in a boat with him though. So it, it could be interesting. We might be ready to throw each other overboard here before too long. He got me. He got me. It looked like, oh my God, we ain't even got the net out. He got a little head shake pulling back. Deep color, boys. Here comes a good one. <laughs> oh, I love it. And the best part about it is there's a bunch of them down there on this brush pile right here. First fish of the day. First real cast of the brush pile. My phone's going off. Somebody's wanting to talk to me this morning. Me, me and Amos has got business to take care of right here. <laughs> this is business right here. Yeah. That's, that's about what you catch a lot of on this lake. You know, just a good, you know, 12, 13 inches. Right, 12, a little over 12 inches, something yeah. like that. Just a, a very good eating size fish. Belly on it, it's starting it to feed. To fatten up. And uh, that fish, honestly, uh, I, I never felt that fish because we're fishing 30, 34, 35 foot deep. I just saw him shoot across, so I automatically set the hook. That's one thing I can tell you when you're uh, fishing with forward facing sonar, you don't always feel that bite. A lot of times it's seeing the bite, you're setting the hook from what you saw. So after they make their lunge, you need to set the hook whether you felt anything or not because that thing's running maybe a quarter second behind. And by that time that fish has done got the jig in its mouth and had the opportunity to spit it back out. So if you wait to feel it by the time the feeling gets to you that deep, the fish has done spit the jig out and he's gone. So set the hook by sight and put them in a the boat. Yeah, a lot of the times that, that feel you feel when you're, you set the hook when it's too late, you're feeling them spit that hook back out. Yeah, you're feeling and them people, spit the hook back people out. People think it's a bite when they set the hook, but it's actually don't That's when they say, out. I set the hook and wasn't nobody home. Yeah. It's, he done grabbed it and he spit it and you just felt the jerk where he lunged it back yep. out of his mouth. Yep. Let's go find some more, man. Let's do that. I'm He's right in, in the hot zone right now. I felt that one, Amos. <laughs> I mean, oh, I th yeah. oh, he pulled back. Man, I wish I had my net. <laughs> when you have to boat flip them, you keep the momentum coming. You keep the rod bent. You keep everything moving in a good, smooth transition. And then you saw I grabbed up the rod and I lifted him straight up. You don't want to stop and then lift up because you actually put more stress on the line and the rod and the fish's mouth than you would if you kept on going with one smooth motion. 
And that's what happens when you give your net away at the ramp and uh, you forgot that that was the only one you had with you. <laughs> but we have made a phone call and we've got a net being delivered on the water this morning. And I can't wait for it to get here. <laughs> How's this for on the water delivery? <laughs> I appreciate it, JR. Camera guy brought me brought me his net out of his boat because I had to give mine to another guy that needed a net and I forgot that I only had one in the boat. So here we go. We are ready to rock. On the Hook is presented by Crappie Monster in partnership with All Aboard Marine, HH Rods and Reels, PTG Outdoors, and JB's Fish Sauce. right here there is no brush here there, there's no brush Eric what we're fishing right here guys is a point this long point comes out and those are the ones we like to concentrate on is the longer points these fish there is no structure in there that is just all a big water crappie we're looking 45 feet deep and 55 feet out so that's why the marks are so small because we're looking so deep and so far out and they're just hanging on that piece of structure because that's where they want to be. These long points are key to success, especially on uh, lakes you've never been to before. Those are That's what you want to check out first. We are on the main lake, and uh, this is just the mouth of a creek that's got a good long point. Damn, I can't tell if he got me or not. I couldn't tell either. I lost your jig. Because it was in his mouth. <laughs> Oh my god, did you get that on tape? I'm so embarrassed right now. Uh, bottom right. <laughs> I lost my jig just because it was in his mouth. I was wondering. <laughs> there you go. I never felt that fish. Uh, I'm actually using a dock shooting rod uh, to cast with. So everything's real light action, uh, light line, light rod, real deep, and that's why I didn't feel that yeah. fish. <laughs> yeah, this, this time of year, we don't really use a lot of long rods on these things because you're getting right on top of them. Just pitch out past them, let pin them down right into them. And they're yeah. usually, you know, like you said, you just look for that jig to disappear. Uh, Amos, what are the length limits and everything here? Uh, 10 inch on this lake. 10 inch yeah. minimum, how many per day? 15 per day per person. Okay, no overs or unders or nope. anything funny like Nothing that? Nothing like so that. 15 it's, per day, 10 I inch mean, minimum. You know, some states at uh, this time of the year, you catch your first whatever it is. You know, if it's daily limits 30, you keep your first 30 fish. Uh, state of Missouri, you keep 15, they got to be over 10 inches year round. Okay, awesome, awesome. We're catching these deep, so we're going to release them. As long as we don't have any problems with them coming back up to the top of the water because of our air bladder, we're going to continue to release them. If they start coming up, then we're going to catch our limit, and then we're going to go get some dinner. Yep. We're going to keep our eyes out for fish to come back up because sometimes they'll go back, they'll go down, and then start floating back up. And if they do, then we're going to do the right thing. <laughs> we're going to eat. eat. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like to eat. <laughs> oh, Amos here. He don't like to eat much. No. <laughs> ah, there we go. This could get fun quick right here. What do you got there? You got a little blackie. You got a black crappie. I got a white crappie. We just doubled up both species off the, the exact same school of fish. So when people tell you that they don't school together, they won't be sitting on the same piece of structure together, they're just wrong. Uh, these fish do school together. Now you can tell they're both right at the same size. Now, I do believe that the age class and the size class matters. Uh, one, one thing I like about these blacks, they get, they get thicker. Thicker. They get, they get some thicker shoulders on them. Whew, he gone. 
He gone. He gone. Let's go. <laughs> he gone, he gone, let's go. We got more fish to catch. <laughs>
it, it, there's, this school is spread out for 50 feet. This, this is really cool. It's one of those things that I don't see a lot of because I don't get to fish deeper lakes very yeah. much. I was about to say, what have they done? Quit biting? <laughs> he Pulled had to... He, Johnny out and... He, he come out of the school. Oh, nice fish. Yes, sir. He can't, he broke from the school and came out and he Saw was that. just falling, falling. You know, my fingers are about to freeze off and it ain't got nothing to do with the air temperature. These fish are cold. <laughs> yes, they are. <laughs> Anytime I can get my fingers cold from touching this many fish, I will take day. it. It's a good day. That is a nice black crappie. And that is just wild to me, them roaming like a, a, yeah, a white crappie does. Yeah. Usually it's the other way around. Yeah, exactly. Normally blacks are gonna be on stretcher. <laughs> yes, sir. That feels like about a 10, maybe an 11. Oh, yes, sir. Right at 11 inch blackfish out of that same school. These are even, that's got a little bit of a, a cool orange tint to it. Yeah. I haven't seen that north of Florida. No. Uh, so that, that's kind of cool that it's got that orange tint to it. Maybe that clearer, darker kind of, I mean, it's clear water, but it's kind of got that black color to it, kind of like yeah, Florida uh, does too. Maybe that's what it, I don't know. Yeah, I think Barry Weaver explained to us what that was in the water down there that made it uh, orange when we fished on Loch Lusa. Yeah, in Florida, it's that vegetation coming into the water and then, uh, decomposing uh, something about it makes the fish turn a little bit orange and that having that orange tint to it when it came out that was kind of cool seeing it this yeah. this far north this right here is what i was talking about earlier having the piece of the cartilage from the fish's mouth on your hook you can see that cartilage is right on the tip of my hook so the very next fish if i hadn't got that off i'd have never caught it i'd have hooked up and then he would have immediately come unbuttoned and I'd been sitting here wondering what just happened. And all it is, is I've got to pay attention to my hook and get that stuff off there. Yep, yes sir, yes sir. Ooh. I like hearing it pull some drag. What you got over there? I think I got a blackie here the way he's fighting. Well, you about got a two for one. There's another one coming up oh. right behind him. This one was fighting kind of like a black crappie, but usually the black crappie fight harder than what a white does. And the way he was shaking his head, I thought maybe this was a, a good black, but it's just a good eater, good eater white. Catch these all day here. Well, I could be down with that, Mr. Amos. <laughs> Let's find out. Oh, we need a net. I don't, um, he's a decent fish there. Very decent fish. That is not white bass, Mr. Amos. I was wrong. That is not white bass. <laughs> That's school big old crappie right there. Yes, sir. <clears throat> I'll tell you what, I'm digging on some Stockton Lake right here. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good lake. A lot of people don't know about it for its crappie. It's, like I said earlier, you know, it's it's one it was known as one of the best uh walleye lakes in the Midwest. Really? Well, I'll tell you what, if we hadn't been throwing a back right now, we we'd be done. Oh yeah. I, I mean the state would have done shut us <laughs> down. <laughs> Either that or we'd been getting a nice ticket if we got caught. Shoo, we have flat thumped them this morning now. These fish right here, guys, uh, are anywhere from 15 to 34 foot deep. They're Gee, just roaming. I'm surprised I didn't see the pole about to yank out of my hand on that one. <laughs> yeah, they're just roaming right in there. And they're not really stacked up anywhere. It, it, there's, this school is spread out for 50 feet. 
th this is really cool. It's one of those things that I don't see a lot of because I don't get to fish deeper lakes very yeah. much. You know, one of the things I really love about coming out on this lake, you ever don't see an eagle on this lake, it'll be a miracle. Because I mean, we have a ton of eagles that I don't, a lot of them live here year round. Yeah. But so they're, they're resident eagles. They're resident eagles. We have resident eagles. And uh, I mean, you'll see, well, I mean, like we said, we've already seen what, two or three this morning. Yeah. And it just adds to the commerce, the beauty, and everything about the lake, the it, ecosystem. It does. And I mean, how can you not love your country and love what? the bird of this country is. It's yeah. A big that, old eagle. Uh, big old bald eagle. Big old We've majestic. already seen a couple of them this morning out here uh, uh, searching for some food. I was hoping to see one snatch one off top of the water this morning, but I ain't seen it just yet. You about to snatch one right I'm here? I'm gonna try. <laughs> He'll wake up. Oh, I heard some drag. He got a little fight to him too. That couldn't have worked out more perfect. I was trying to keep that out from your leg, keep you from getting wet this morning. <laughs> uh, that is a good eating size fish right there. Oh yeah. And it being a black crappie, you got a whole lot better filet off that oh, black yeah. one. Yeah. You make a couple sandwiches. There you go. Now this season on On the Hook, this is about the clearest water that we've seen anywhere. So what's really gonna be different here? Uh, really, your the color of jigs you want to use. You want to use that natural color. You know, it's, I don't know if you can see what I got here or not. Using a crappie monster, small fry, and a margarita, which a margarita color is pretty cool because when you hold it up to the light, it's uh, translucent. You know, it changes. It's like got a pink color in it, and as it flips down, it'll kind of turn to a like a bluish gray, and then back to pink, and you know, in these shad and stuff in these lakes, especially these clear lakes. You look at them and those shad have that little pink side on them or little bluish gray sides on them. Yeah. So, you know, it's a, it's a natural color for these fish. And you want to use natural colors in these clear in these clear lakes, you know. Um, now, do you downsize your jig head too? I don't downsize my jig head as much. I'll use the eighth ounce jig head. I'll eighth downsize ounce. my jig itself, the jig uh, okay, okay. itself. Okay, okay, just, just cutting yeah. it down. I like to use a smaller hook. You know, I don't like to use those because uh, you have quite a few black crappie in this lake, as you've been and seeing. And they it. like the small stuff. And, and they, they the like the small stuff, and they got a smaller mouth. So, it, you know, use that big one hook or that number one hook or in your jig heads or that number two hook. It, it can almost get too big for those small, those black crappie to get in their mouth. Okay. So I like to use like a number three or number four hook. You can take this bait. I just downsized that bait. So if they're short hitting you, Especially that smaller hook in there. Now you just went from that, what, inch? What is those, inch and a half? Uh, they're they're 2.1 inches. Now you're down to about maybe, what, an inch and a half? Inch and a half or so, yeah. So you just downsize your bait. And that's one of the things I like about crappie monster bait, especially in the uppercut. So we're going to downsize our bait here. Yeah. And then we're going to go down there and catch those fish that's lethargic and not want to move much and they'll uh, eat those smaller baits. Okay, well good deal. Let's see if we can't trick them. All right. That look like good It is a good one. Oh, the big old white crappie. Laying down there underneath that log. Yep, uh, right underneath that log. I, I seen him Ooh. start and I thought, oh Lord, here comes a good one. He's a thick one too. Boy, he's got some shoulders. How thick he is right there. Well, Amos, buddy. That's I, a couple sandwiches. That's a couple sandwiches right there. <laughs> Man, I appreciate you coming out here with me. You have it's, got one heck of a fishery and a great community here. Yeah. 
This is definitely going to be on my list of top crappie destinations nationwide to come and visit from here on out. I'm even, I'm going to bring my family over here, might even bring the camper yeah. and set up and uh, I'm going to spend some time out here this summer. There's some great campgrounds. There's one just right up there off that point right over there behind us. But uh, I mean, you don't catch a lot of big fish. Um, that you know, if you're looking for that two pounder, you probably. I'll tell you what, them. I'll take them all day yeah. long. I don't care where we're at. Catch eaters like you wouldn't believe. Yes, sir. Well, again, I appreciate it, man. Make sure and tune in, guys, because we're going to be coming back at you with another episode right here on the hook. day.